ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان عصق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في نار ما دي بوزر سيستوس in the last lecture on the last خطبة الجمعة we talked about a topic that the Muslim that the Mu'min has to love Allah more than anything else and we talked how can we strengthen our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we talk about a maybe even more important topic how can we what deeds we have to do that Allah loves us because there are some people they claim that they love Allah or maybe they love Allah maybe they love God but God does not, does not love them. And they're living in this life and they are thinking they're on the right way, but they're on the wrong way. Like, for example, wrong religions. There are some people that say, they say, we, live, we love Allah, we love God. But of course, God does, does not love the people for eternity to hellfire in the hereafter. So we have to look how can we increase the love of Allah to us? This is a very important question. How can we increase the love of Allah to us? And Alhamdulillah, this religion is perfect from the beginning to the end. From Surah Al Fatiha to Surah Al Nas, everything in this religion is perfect. And the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, is the one who showed us. How can we increase the love of Allah to us? And this is a big thing. There's an ayat in the Quran where Allah mentions this fact very clear. And I think most of you know this verse. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran, He says, Qul, say, O Muhammad, in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. Say, O Muhammad, if you love Allah, if you really love Allah, then follow me, so Allah will love you. So the first thing, what we mentioned today is, that we have to follow the messenger of Allah, because this is the way what make what increase the love of Allah to us if we love Allah then we will follow the messenger you know it's also proof for us do you really love Allah do you really love the messenger then believe me everything what you hear from the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, everything you hear from a Sahih Hadith an authentic immediately as as stronger as your love is you will immediately follow it. You know, and when we say we have to have the Prophet follow the way it, then it's of course first the Aqidah of Islam that we have to follow. That we have to follow the Aqidah of the Salaf. And the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he says, 
على 73 70 فرقه كلها في النار This ummah will marry illa wahida Go into 73 sects 73 groups So there will be 73 groups Kulluha fi nar illa wahida They are all in the hellfire Only one not And of course then the sahaba asked Wa ma hiya tilka firqa Who are these people? This group and the Prophet said, "Ma anna alayhi al-yawm wa ashabi." The one who is acting on the religion like me, on the way for me and my Sahaba. So he stresses this point. So he stresses at this point that we have to look how did the Sahaba believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, and we have it also in the Quran in Surah Nisa, where. Allah says, وَمَنْ يُشَاكِهِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعَدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَّى وَيَتَبِّ غَيْرَ السَّبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلِمَا تَوَلَّ وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّ وَسَاءَ مَسِيرًا In this verse, Allah says that who knows, who, who, who does not go the way of the Prophet, after, he know, after this huda came, became clear to him, and he follows another way than the ways of the believers, who are the believers? The Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, that these people were at the end go to hellfire. Why I'm mentioning this? Because of course when we are talking, we want that the increase of Allah to us, there's a, the decrease of uh, the, the love of Allah to us the increases. You know, I cannot talk about all Akida points here. But what I want to say is if we go out here, what do we have to know? That we have to learn our religion. That we have to learn with Quran and Sunnah and Alhamdulillah, you have here in Qatar, you have a lot of options, a lot of opportunities. You can, for example, come to this center, Fana Center, in the Andas, where the people teach the religion because this is the most, among the most important things in our life. There is one uh, uh, saying, they said, فَكِيهٌ وَاحِدٌ أَشْرِسْ from the Salaf شَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْتَانِ مِنْ أَلْفِ, من ألف عَابِدٍ it means that one person who has knowledge of the religion, he is harder for the shaitan, because the shaitan he wants everybody in hellfire. He is harder for the shaitan than elf or bad people who always pray and make everything. Why? Because this good man, he wants to pray, he is praying, he is fasting, but maybe he has a lack of knowledge and so the shaitan gets him and falls into bid'a or into shirk or something else. But, alhamdulillah, we have here the opportunity to learn. This is what I want to say. We want to follow the way of the Prophet. First of all, in Aqidah. Second, second, in the way he acted. His worship, his actions, his mu'amala, his behavior. Of course, nobody is perfect, but we have to try to do our best to improve every day. You know, and maybe I give you today one advice how we can improve now. And we have to remember the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Who loves my sunnah? Me. And who believes he will be with me? Loves me in the paradise. So, so I think everybody here wants to be with the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in paradise. So we try to follow the Sunnah and we have to follow, be very strict in following it. You know, and with Sunnah now, you know, the Sunnah has different meanings according to the context you mention it. For example, we can, when we say, we talk about Sunnah, we can mean Nawafil, you know, things that are not obligatory. For example, Nawafil prayers or something like this. But what I, or with Sunnah, we can mean the, mean the Aqidah of Islam. It can also be meant. Because, for example, Imam Ahmed's book, he wrote the Sunnah, it's a Rasul book about Aqidah. Or with the Sunnah, we can mean the Hadith. What I mean is the way of the Prophet, actually. You know, and when we see, when we look, and we talked before about the way of the Sahaba, because there is a close connection to the Aqidah to the belief of Islam, if you look to the Sahaba, 
You know, they were very strict in following what the Prophet said. There was one time an ikhtilaf between Ibn Abbas and other Sahabis who followed a fatwa of Umar and Abu Bakr. Umar and Abu Bakr, they are human beings and of course they can also, it could be, they are the, the best from this Ummah, but of course it could be that they say something that ishtihad, make, make ishtihad, and the Prophet ﷺ said something else. The Prophet said, إِذَا حَكَّمَ الْحَاكِمُ فَاشْتَهَدَ ثُمَّ أَسَابُ فَلَوْ أَرَانَ If somebody, a Hakim, he makes the ishtihad, and he is right, he gets double, double the reward. And if he's wrong, he gets one reward. So the Dao ibn Abbas, he was talking to other Sahabis and said, yeah, but you say this and that, but, or, or to Tabi'in, to, to other people, to believers, and they said, yeah, Abu Bakr and Omar said this and that. So what did he say? He said, يُوشَكُ أَن تَنْزِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ هِجَارَةُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَقُولُ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَتَقُلُونَ قَالَ أَبُو بَكْرِ عُمَرِ you know, the, the, the rain from the heaven to you. I'm stones, we're scared that stones will rain from the heaven unto you. I say the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and you say Abu Bakr and Omar say, uh, are saying this and that. You know, you see even Abu Bakr and Omar, you know if there's a word of alayhi salatu wa salam, we have the Prophet, have no option. We have to say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we follow. This has to be our way, and believe me, believe me, we are now talking about the situation of the Muslims around the world. We are talking about the situation in, in any country. Believe me, if we follow the Sunnah, if we follow the way of the Prophet, والسلام, we will get blessing. We will get blessings in our deeds, inshallah. For example, I give you only one example. A sunnah that we want to, I want to, uh, uh, we, we want to re-establish a sunnah. One time, we said, yeah, we want to follow the Prophet wasalam, And it's really a sunnah mahjura, it's something the people forgot. I talked last khutbah at the end of the prayer, I talked a bit about it. But I, today, you know, because talking about, we are just, uh, you know, the, the return of the Sunnah and so on, and we want to return the Sunnah, that the Sunnah returns to Qatar and everything. Of course, I don't say, you know, here now nobody is following the Sunnah. But of course, we are all, you know, me, you, everybody, there are some mis mistakes, of course. And when we see something from the Quran or something from the Sunnah, that we are making a mistake or that we can do, or not the mistake that we can do something better according to the Sunnah, then we should follow it, right? So I have an example, because I know this because I, in, in the countries where I have been, you know, you see in some countries it's practiced, in some countries it's not practiced. It's really often like this. You see, Sunnah is practiced in a particular country, in another particular country, it's not practiced. But so we have to reintroduce this Sunnah, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, here are people from all over the world, from India, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from Indonesia, from a, from, from a lot of countries. <laughs> I cannot mention all countries now. And we want to reintroduce it now in Qatar. And when you go to holidays to your country, you try to reintroduce it. Alhamdulillah. And what is that? I, say, I said before, this is a sign that you love the Prophet. Even the smallest thing. And it's a very, very easy thing. It's just about moving five centimeters, centimeters to the left or five centimeters to the right. And inshallah, it's a sign that you love the Prophet. It's easy or not? Five centimeters to the left or five centimeters to the right. You know, there's a hadith in Bukhari, and it's mentioned there. And we know this, it's always mentioned in, before the prayer that the Prophet said, Su sufufakum fa'inna taswiyata sufufi min iqamati salah. That we have to make the walls straight and so on. But what does that mean? Don't let any space between you and so on. What does that mean? Look, now we said before, follow the way of the Prophet, and the Prophet said that you have to look how did the Sahaba understand to and religion. So Anas ibn Malik, he mentions, he mentions in Sahih al-Bukhari, he mentions, كَانَ عَدُوزْنَا يُلْزِقُ مِنْكَبَهُ بِمِنْكَبِ سَحِبِهِ وَقَدَمَهُ بِقَدَمِهِ 
That means that one guy, you know, don't let uh, the space between you. Head like inside, that means close like this. It was touching the other one's shoulder. And that his foot was touching the foot of the other, the other person. So now you ask, what does mean? And with touching the foot, the toes. So, Nu'man ibn Bashir, in the same book in Bukhari, he says, يُلْزِكُ مَنْ كَبَهُ بِمَنْ قَبِ سَاحِبِهِ رَعَيْتُ رَجُلُ Where he said, رَعَيْتُ رَجُلُ I have seen the man يُلْزَكُ كَعْبُ بِقَابِ سَاحِبِهِ That he make this ka'ab, you know, this is uh, uh, the ankles were touching each other like this, you know. And believe me, this is a very, you know, what I see, for example, in Morocco, where I've been, in Dikula Park, but it was also not practiced before. Now, when it's practiced, a lot of more people fit into the masjid. Because the, the, the walls are closer. And you know, as the first wall is the best wall for the men. And the, and the, and the, best, and the, and the best wall for the women is the last wall, when, they, when they're praying together with, with men in one uh, room, in one masjid. You know, and you really see... You know, you have a wall where now are fitting in maybe 20 people. And you see with this, when you're staying like this, they're fitting maybe 27 people or 28 people in it. It's really, it's really, uh, it's really, mashallah, you know, it's unimaginable that you so many people fit into the mosque afterwards. I just want to mention it that we inshallah begin with you know, this today. And maybe some people say, you know, this What's the problem? What's, uh, you know, is it so bad now? Is our prayer not accepted when we don't do it? I don't say this. You know, but what I say is, you know, when we, when we can reintroduce a sunnah, and it's a sign that we love the Prophet, with five centimeters to the right or five centimeters to the left, we should do this. And maybe somebody says, you know, I cannot concentrate when I'm so close to other people. You know, this is just because you know, you're not used to it. For me, for example, I cannot concentrate when I'm standing and uh, my neighbor is standing uh, 30 centimeters away from me. I cannot concentrate. It's just, we are not used to it. This is one example. The next thing, this was the first, uh, the first thing, you know, we talked about how can we, uh, how the love of Allah to us uh, uh, improves, you know, to us. First thing, following the way of the Prophet, I gave one example what we could do the next thing is we have to try and always to remember that we have to have ikhlas in our deeds sincerity if the women does not under, the, do not understand they have to clap you know that i'm going closer to the microphone this is also why i'm standing a bit like this now because i have to be close to the microphone that the women can understand the next point is we have to have sincerity in our deeds. And this is, like the Salaf said, one of the hardest things. The Prophet ﷺ said, The thing I fear most for my Ummah is the small shirk. And what is the small shirk? That you do something that the people see you or hear you. You know, and this is a very, very hard, very hard thing. And we know that the first people who are going to hellfire are one Mujahid. He fought that the people say, oh, he's a very tough guy. And one man, he, he spent a lot in the way of Allah. But he spent that the people say he's generous. And one person, he read the Quran. And, uh, 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 and he read the Quran that the people call him a scholar. Or a kare. You know, and this, you know, we have really to be aware about this. So how can we improve our ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the Prophet, I showed, I told you before, every prophet problem until Yom al Qiyamah, the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam showed us how to handle it, how to solve it. Alhamdulillah, this religion is absolutely perfect and there's one dua the prophet the prophet mentioned 
اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا عالم واستغفروك لما لا عالم. Of course you cannot write it down now, but who does not know it? You know here pamphlets, and we can also mention it later on that you can write it down, and it means you know I I uh, seek refuge in you, that I commit shirk to you, and I know it, and I pray forgive I pray to you for forgiveness for the shirk I do, and uh, uh, and uh, and I don't know it, you know like this, and this you have to say. Otherwise, you can also say. Oh Allah, give me ikhlas, give me sincerity in my deeds and my words. That's the first thing. Second advice, that before talking or we're doing something, that we are thinking about this, why, that we are thinking about why we are doing this particular deed. That we are thinking about akhirah, that we are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I give you another very, another advice. This one was two advices. First, the dua. Second, remembering why we are doing this, this particular deed. And third, do a deed. Take one deed nobody knows of, even not your wife. And do it regularly. Well, because at least on the last day, you know, if all your deeds are gone, because the shaitan came into it, if all your deeds are gone, you have these deeds. You no, know, you do something nobody knows. Only between you and Allah. Nobody knows. For example, dhikr or istighfar in a special time, and nobody, nobody sees you. He knows it, not your wife, not your child. Even not, try it. And this will help you, inshallah. واستغفر الله لي لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شر ولا إله إلا أنت استغفر وكتب لك الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا اتقوا انظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون الله والت... Dear brothers and sisters there are two other points I want to mention that the love of Allah to us increases because Allah mentions how his law to us increases. There is one hadith, and you can find also in uh, Arba'ina Wawiya. I mention this because a lot of people left this book Arba'ina Wawiya at home. And this is a holy hadith where Allah says, uh, you know, I only want to stress on this point. He says, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ حَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَدْتُ إِلَيَّ My, my, Lord, my slave does not come nearer to me with something what I love more than the deeds I made obligatory for, for, he, for him. You know? You come not closer to Allah with something Allah loves more than the deeds he made, he made obligatory for you. He made obligatory for you. For example, five times prayer a day. The zakah, so on and so on. These are the most beloved deeds to Allah. You come, you come with, with nothing closer to Allah, what he does love more than this deeds. And then he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَقْرَبُ إِلَيَّ بِنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And then my slave continues to make nawaf the yatakafil deeds, deeds that are not obligatory, for, for example, sunnah prayer, until I love him. Until I love him. Then he mentions afterwards the benefit when Allah loves you. So we see, we first of all, to make our, to, to fulfill our obligation. That's the first, that's the condition. If you fulfill the condition, you make this obligatory deeds, then afterwards you have to make more deeds that are not obligatory. For example, Sunnah prayers. And you know them all, you know, two, two rakat before, before the morning prayer and so on. I need not to mention it now, 
this is also here a lot of lessons if you want to learn more about your religion we cannot mention every nawafil deed that you can do it's impossible we can speak until like this maybe i not but <laughs> when somebody evening else comes and you know we can we can talk hours about nawafil deeds but i want to give you two particular deeds or three you know who wants the guarantee for paradise after 40 days you don't have to raise your hands but i ask this just like this and you have to answer in yourself who wants the guarantee for paradise after 40 days i think everybody if if i would tell you you know after 40 days you get the guarantee you got you you will get the guarantee for uh, i don't know ten thousand uh, uh, dollar or whatever you would say yeah it's good it's it's good uh, ten thousand dollar why not you know now you can get the guarantee for paradise after 40 days and what is this the prophet والسلام, says this hadith is mentioned in Tirmidhi. He says, "Man salla arba'in yawman fi jama'atin yudriku takbirat al-ula kutiba lahu bara'atan who prays 40 days in jama'ah and he gets into the prayer with the first takbir. That means, you know, the imam is standing. He makes takbir and you are standing behind him. And when he says Allahu Akbar, you raise immediately your hands and say Allahu Akbar. You, get, you are standing in the wall when the Imam makes takbir. Some people even say something else about this, but this is inshallah the strongest and the, the strongest opinion. You know, the Imam yudrik bu takbiratul ula. You know, when the Imam says Allahu Akbar, standing behind him, you say yes, Allahu Akbar. Not you come uh, when he's in the ruku or something else, but you standing there when he makes the first takbir. He, Allah writes for him two things. First of all, bara'atu min nifaq and secondly, bara'atu min na. That he is, that he cannot, that he cannot be a munafiq, a hypocrite anymore, and that he will not enter hellfire. And what is the, uh, and when you will not enter hellfire, that means you will go to paradise. So after you have to guarantee that you will not 40 days go to hellfire. And believe me, the shaitan, he does not want you to, 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 that you that you can uh, do this believe me try it it's very hard with me until now i don't know anybody who managed this because you may be in the prayer then the shaitan comes and says hey did you your knee was it for dhur or what was it for us a prayer you know you know like this you will very he will try to disturb you but make dua to allah that you get 40 days and afterwards, Allah will, inshallah, clean your heart. And you will afterwards, until the end of your life, do the deeds of the people of paradise, inshallah. But try this. It's a 40 days, like 40 days training session for your iman. Ramadan is 30 days or 29 days. These are 40 days. You have really to focus. Every day, you write down the prayer times. You say, okay, I have to make wudu 30 minutes, for example. Just an example. 30 minutes before the prayer so that I get the first takbir. Try it, 40 days. Another guarantee is, we know all, and we're talking about nawafil deeds, we all know four prayers, nawafil, before the midday prayer, before dhur, and two afterwards, right? But there's another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ salla arba'a, مَنْ salla qabla dhuhri arba'an wa ba'daha arba'an who prays for nawafil before dhur and for afterwards Allah makes the hellfire forbidden for him no so these are two examples the second the third is a nawafil for this day it's to read surah al kaf on every yawm al jum'a to read surah al kaf and yawm al jum'a begins with the marib after marib prayer of Thursday, you know how we understand it in, in West. You know, so you can begin there. We could get the light until the next Jumu'ah prayer. Because then you will, inshallah. So the fourth thing what I want to mention is, uh, what I also want to mention is the Nawafil prayers, it said, you may, be, you may be already realize this, you know, for every obligation we have Nawafil things. For example, it's obligatory to pray 
prayers. And for every prayer, you have no wafid prayers. Five. Why? Because it's, you know, when you have a nux, you know, like uh, your prayer was not perfect, you know. You know this nawafil prayer coming to your scale and they're perfecting the prayer, you know, on the last day. Like hajj, you make one time, one time in your life, it's obligatory. Afterwards, every hajj and umrah is nawafil. It's not obligatory. It's recommended. And you get, you know, when you have a naqs in your, in your hajj, inshallah, the next hajj will be better. And also, we know that the Prophet ﷺ said, the Umrah to the next Umrah, it wipes out all sins between the two Umrahs. And the accepted Hajj, in form of that it was a good Hajj, you know, there is no other reward but paradise. So, of course, who made first time Hajj, first of all, every Muslim, he likes to be in Mecca, he likes to see the Kaaba and so on. And, and, and secondly, you know, he thinks, oh, maybe the next Hajj, it will be Mabru. Maybe the first one's not Mabru. Maybe the next one. So I want to get paradise, inshallah. And may Allah give us the opportunity to go to the Hajj, inshallah. I mean, the next point is what increases the love of Allah to us is Tahajjud prayer. That we pray, for example, in the last third of the night. This is the best time for prayer because it's very you know Allah says in the, uh, the, the says or the Prophet says yanzilu rabbuna tabaraka wa tu'ara fi kulli laylatin hina yabqa thuluth layl al-akhi illa sama'i dunya in the last third of the night Allah comes down in a way we don't know to the to the sama'i dunya to the heaven of the earth of the dunya and he says who makes dua to him so that I answer his dua? And who asks me? And I give him. And who does, give, he who does beg me for forgiveness? That I forgive him. You know, this is the best time, the best time, the last third of the night, inshallah. And this is something what increases the love of Allah to us inshallah I want to mention something else until I before we pray there is an obligation on this ummah you know and this ummah is the ummah of da'wah kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linas ta'muruna bil maruf wa tanhawna anil munka wa tu'minuna billah you are the best people that Allah like created among the human beings why you Tell the people to do good and forbid the evil and you believe in Allah. You know, this is our sign, the sign of this ummah, to make da'wah. And it's really important for every single Muslim. Of course, nobody, not everybody has the knowledge to, for example, to talk about every topic. Nobody. But this da'wah today is not only about talking. It's also about bring somebody with you to the mosque here. When you are lessons, when you are lectures, you can take your, the people who are working with you, for example, non-Muslims, bring them to the lectures, or we have pamphlets here. You can distribute the pamphlets at your work, because a person alone, me, or I don't know, some people who are working here, we cannot, make, uh, we cannot deliver the message to everybody. We are one ummah. Together, we are strong. So we have to bend together. And to help each other. What that we bend together and and uh, and that we are that we have really the motivation to to deliver the message to everybody. And I think this is really maybe the biggest problem of the Ummah in these days. You know, everybody has to feel responsible for this message. Believe me, look at Christianity. You know, there are some Christian sects, everybody in this Christian sect, he has to do da'wah. He has to go to special times of the week where they learn how to talk with Muslims or with non-Muslims to bring them to Christianity. Everybody. You know, what about us? Normally we, we have to be more keen to deliver the message than them. Because we are the ummah of da'wah. We are the ummah of da'wah. Lesson one. 
Secondly, you know, in this sex, every single person, he spends every month 10% of his uh, mon monthly salary. 10%. Imagine he gets $1,000 uh, a month, for example, and he spends hundreds of it for dawah work, for pamphlets, and everything. You know, we have a lot of pamphlets here, we have a lot of little books in all languages. Filipino language, uh, Urdu, uh, uh, Nepali language, I, I don't know uh, all this, of course, <laughs> not all this language. But you know, here all, everything is, is here. So, try to take it. Make your list, make a list of all the people you know here, or also in your country, who are not Muslims. And the Muslims, you know, try to bring them to the prayer. Talk to them. Say to him, you know, come on, come on. We go to the prayer. It's good for you. It's important for you. Listen, bring him to a lecture here. Maybe something will enter his heart and will grow afterwards. Like a seed into the earth. Bring him to a lesson. Maybe from a lecture, from a lesson, you know, one word enters his heart like a seed enters the earth. And afterwards there comes a big tree where the people benefit from. Like an apple tree, the people, maybe he's afterwards out of it. Yeah, somebody calls to Islam, inshallah. You know, this is my advice. And I pray Allah that he gives us, that he gives us the power to pray this 40 days in Jama'ah. And that we get the first takbir. And he gives us the power to, to read the Surah Al-Kaf every Friday. And I pray to Allah that he gives us the power to pray after every door. And, bef uh, and before every door, four rakat sunnah. Amen. And I pray to Allah, and I, I ask Allah that He makes us from the people who deliver this message to all people here in Qatar. Amen. Rabbatina fi dunya hasana, wa fi akhirati hasana, wa qina adabana. These are my words today, and I beg Allah for forgiveness for my sins and for your sins. Akhim as-salam.